and if they as well gave all of the supreme peace and happiness known to God and men, together with the foremost happiness of God and men, the most wonderful bliss to every living being in all those worlds, if they gave this bliss as a gift to all the living beings in as many worlds as are discussed above. There are three kinds of giving. One, the giving of wealth, two, the giving of dharma, and three, the giving of fearlessness. Of the first kind, giving the giving of wealth. There are two kinds, internal and external. Internal wealth includes your body, heart, nature, and life. One vows, I will give things of my own. I will give my eyes to people, all my ears, my nose, my tongue, all my head, my brains, all my morrow. This donor wealth includes one's country, cities, wife, and children. One who truly practices giving gives away his whole country to others. He does not want to be a kind or to own cities. One also vows, although all the wealth in San Francisco belong to me, I wish to give it away to others. Men find it most difficult to give up their wives and girlfriends. Although you cannot give them up, you still should be able to do so. This then is true giving, giving up what you basically cannot give up. If you cannot give up what you should be able to give up, then even if you give, it does not count as true giving. There once a woman who heard me say that giving a wife to others is a form of giving. So she asked if she could give away her husband. This is probably the first time anyone has given away her husband. I told her, you must first find someone else for him. If you can't find anyone to accept him, how can you give him away? You can't throw him out in the street and call it giving. Later, I said, you don't really have a mind of giving. You still can't give him up. And in fact, she did not give him away after all. Giving wealth means that one can renounce one's valuables and give them all away. All away. The second kind of giving is the giving of drama. Of all the kinds of giving of offerings, the, the offering of drama is foremost. Giving Dharma is also called offering Dharma. To lecture sutras, speak Dharma, speak living beings, and turn the Dharma wheel are all forms of giving Dharma. Giving Dharma is better than giving wealth, but the Dharma you give should accord with the conditions of living beings it is intended for so that when they hear the Dharma they will become enlightened. The third is the giving of fearlessness someone may have an unexpected accident or see a ghost a demon or some other strange beast or bandit and forget everything and become totally disarranged at that time you console them don't be afraid recite namo kwanshin pusa and kwanshin bodhisattva will protect you don't be afraid. If you explain this so that they can understand, they will then recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, and as soon as they do, they will naturally lose their fear and regain composure. Or they can recite the name of Amitabha Buddha, and they will very quickly be far from fear. I have briefly described these three kinds of giving. You should practice them in cultivating the Bodhisattva way. And if they offered such gifts as have been described to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of these worlds, if they gave all kinds of offerings to the infinity of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in that infinity of worlds, doing so constantly without cease for as many compass as very fine most of dust in those Buddha lands, if they gave these gifts constantly, passing through as many compass as there are most of dust in that many Buddha lands, making gifts not for just one or two days, but continuously and without rest for as many ends as there are dust most in the infinity of worlds. They would then acquire much merit and virtue. 
the merit and virtue acquired by this pupil who practice giving would be very great indeed. But the merit and virtue gained from these gifts when compared to the merit and virtue of a person who hears these king's vows pass by his ear but once, a person who hears these ten great king's vows of universal worthy bodhisattva recited, not explained, but simply recited so that they pass by his ear but once, will gain merit and virtue which surpasses the merit and virtue of the person described above who made all those gifts. If you compare this person's merit and virtue with the merit and virtue derived from giving in the infinity of wounds for an infinity of compass, the merit and the merit of the latter compared to the merit of a person who hears the great vows but once does not equal one pass in one hundred. When the ear hears the eternal seeds of body are planted, and the merit and virtue derived from all this giving does not equal one hundredth the merit and virtue derived from hearing, hearing from hearing these ten great kings of vows, nor one part in one thousand. The infinity of giving does not equal one thousand part or even one part in an Upanishad. An Upanishad refers to the nature of a dust mode. It is smaller than a dust mode. The merit and virtue derived from giving all the unsurpassed gifts for many ends of time does not equal an Upanishad of the merit and virtue gained from hearing the ten kings of vows. Why is the why is the merit and virtue derived from these ten great kings of vows so great? If you give wealth, you can only sustain a person's impermanent body and life, but giving these ten great kings of vows is a gift of drama, which perfects one's Buddha nature. These ten great vows are called universal worth contemplations, and when one cultivates this contemplation, the one becomes the many, and the many become one. The one becomes the entire Dharma realm, and the Dharma realm becomes one. Worshipping one Buddha, one worships all Buddhas of the Dharma realm. Worshipping all the Buddhas of the Dharma realm, one worships one Buddha. The first of universal worthies, ten great vows, is to worship and respect all Buddhas, and the merit and virtue derived from this practice is inexhaustible. It follows, therefore, that the merit and virtue from making offering of this drama is especially great. If you cultivate this drama, then day by day, your body seeds will grow, and before long, you will accomplish the fruition of body. So you see that the merit and virtue of giving the drama of the ten great vows is especially great. Sutra. Moreover, if a person receives and maintains these great vows with a mind of deep faith, reads and recites them, or writes out just a single four-line verse, he or she can quickly eradicate the karma of the five unintermittent offenses, or of the one's illnesses that afflict the body and mind, as well as the various kinds of bitter suffering, will be wiped away up to and including bad karma equal to the fine most of dust in Buddha lands. Commentary. Moreover, if a person, it is not certain, but there may be such a person who receives and maintains these great vows with a mind of deep faith. Deep faith is not shallow, and the person spoken of here has brought forth a mind of proper and deep faith, which means a mind without doubts. This is a person who receives and maintains, read and recites, who relies on this drama to cultivate, and who receives and maintains this chapter, this chapter on the conduct and vow of universal worthy bodhisattva every day. To read refers to using a book to read the text from memory. Of if you cannot read or recite the text, perhaps you can write it out with a pen. Further, if you can write it out completely, perhaps you can write out just a single four-line verse. 
For example, you might write out to worship and respect all Buddhas, to praise the first commands, to intensively cultivate making offerings, to repent of karmic obstacles and reform. Someone who writes out just for lies like this, or who practices in any of the ways just mentioned, can quickly eradicate the karma of the five unintermittent offenses. The five unintermittent offenses are five karmic offenses whose retribution is the uninterrupted hell. If one person is in this particular hell, he sees that his body totally fills the hell up so that there is no space and his suffering is serious. If there is more than one person in this hell, their bodies do not obstruct one another, yet each person sees his own body totally filling up this hell. Time spent in this hell is unintermittent. From the time someone first enters it until the time he leaves, there is no break in the suffering he undergoes as a retribution for his offenses. His suffering is unintermittent. His lifetime is unintermittent, and the retribution he undergoes is unintermittent. All of the world's illnesses that afflict the body and mind, some people become ill in body, and some people become ill in mind. Illness of the body refers to the sicknesses we may contract, and illnesses of the mind refers to the suffering in our minds when we are not happy as well as the various kinds of bitter suffering. If you are sick, you undergo suffering and affliction, and if you suffer and are afflicted, then you are not happy. Every kind of evil karma can be wiped away, but to do so, you must have deep faith. If you do not have faith, but only wish to test the method, you will not get a response. Why? because the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas do not need to pass any tests given by living beings. They can test you, but you cannot say, I don't believe the methods spoken by the Buddha, so I think I'll try them out. If you want to do something honestly, you should follow the method sincerely, not test it. If you have true faith and use this method, then all karma will be wiped away, up to and including bad karma equal to the fine most of dust in Buddha lands. Sutra All the demon armies, the Rakshas, Rakshasas, Kumbandas, Yashachas, Buddhas, and so forth, and all evil ghosts and spirits that drink blood and devour, devour flesh will go far away from this person, or they will resolve before long to draw near and protect him. Therefore, if he recites these vows aloud, he will move freely through the world without obstruction, like the moon appearing through the clouds. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will praise him. People and gods should all bow in respect to him, and all living beings should make offerings to him. This good man will easily get reborn as a human and will perfect all of the universal with his merit and virtue. Before long, he will be just like universal worthy himself, obtaining a subtle and wonderful physical body, complete with the 32 marks of the great man. If he is born among human or gods, he will always live in a superior family. He will totally destroy the evil destinies and will leave all bad companions. Fully able to vanquish all externalists, he will completely free himself from all afflictions. Just as the lordly lion subdues all beasts, this person will be worthy of receiving the offerings of all living beings. Commentary All the demon armies in this world there are many heavenly demons and externalists. Why don't they show themselves? They hide away because the Buddha, the Buddha Dharma is in the world. But if there was no Buddha Dharma here, they would pour forth and destroy the world. What are these demon armies? The word demon in Chinese is derived from the Sanskrit Mara, and its meaning is murderer or one form of 
killing. Mara wishes to kill any living being it sees, and the demonic armies include demon kings, demon citizens, demon sons, and demon daughters. Demon women are especially beautiful and especially deadly because they still delight in killing. The yakshas can move very fast. They are flying yakshas, earth traveling yakshas, and yakshas who travel in space. They are courageous, cruel, and delight in fighting, and their soul delight is in doing harm. Rakshasa is a Sanskrit word which carries the meaning of fearsome ghost. Both the yakshas and rakshasas are mentioned in the Suragama mantra. Yocha Je La He Line 247 and La Cha Se Cha La He Line 248. Yocha is the name Yaksha and La Cha Se is the name Rakshasa. Reciting the Suragama mantra prevents these demons from harming people and in fact causes them to protect people. Reciting Ro Cha Chia La He La Cha Se Chia La He can dissolve dangerous situations. Kumbandas are barrel shaped ghosts. They are also called winter melon ghosts because of their shape. This is a nightmare ghost that prevents people from talking when they are asleep. You want to scream, but you cannot, and you try to squirm away, but you cannot move. You are unable to do anything when they sit on you. Vishatra also are also ghosts which eat the vitality of things. These ghosts eat people's essential energies as well as the essential energies of the five grains, Bhutas and so forth. Bhutas are another kind of ghost. This ghost's name means big body, for in fact his body is as large as Matsumeru. These two ghosts, Bhutas and Kumbandas, are also found in the Suragama Mantra. The Kumbada ghost is also called the ghost which arises in cars and can prevent car accidents, and together with the Buddha can overcome problems in cities and countries. For example, if a city's walls were crumbling, and if you recited the Suragama Mantra, you could prevent this disaster. In the same way, you can prevent car accidents, accidents on horseback, and so forth. These two ghosts can protect people so that they will not be bothered by these kinds of difficulties. In the Suragama Mantra, we find the names of these ghost kings, and if you recite this mantra, not only will they refrain from hurting you, but they will protect you. These types of ghosts also include all evil ghosts and spirits that drink blood and devour flesh, which will go far away from this person. If these ghosts do not drink people's blood, then they eat their flesh. But if you recite the Ten Great Kings of Vows of Universal Worthy Bodhisattva, then these evil ghosts and spirits will go far away from you, or they will resolve before long to draw near and protect him. If you are especially sincere in your conservation, they will not go far away, but will decide to draw near you and become your Dharma protector. Therefore, if he recites these vows aloud, he will move freely through the world without obstruction. One will not be hindered in one's travels in the world, for all one's obstructions will be destroyed. One will be like the moon appearing through the clouds, and wherever he goes, he seems to radiate light. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will praise him. Not only is he like the full moon in a cloudless sky, but all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas praise him, and people and gods should bow in respect to him. All humans and gods respect one who recites these ten great kings of vows, and all living beings should make offerings to him. 
this good man, the good man who recites these ten great kings of vows, will easily get reborn as a human. In each life, he will be born as a human being and will perfect all of universal with his merit and virtue. He will be able to cultivate to perfection the merit and virtue of universal worthy bodhisattva. Before long, he will be just like universal worthy himself, obtaining a subtle and wonderful physical body. He will quickly obtain a subtle and wonderful body like universal worthy bodhisattva, complete with the 32 marks of the great man, just like the Buddhas. If he is born among humans or gods, if he is born in the human realm or in the heavens, he will always live in the superior family. Wherever he goes, the family in which he is born will always be a great one with the most power, blessings, and wealth. He will totally destroy the evil destinies, the four evil destinies of the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and asuras, and will leave all bad companions. Those who are good friends will always draw near to him, but bad companions will be left far behind. Fully able to vanquish all externalists, he will have the power to control all adherents of non-Buddhist religions. He will completely free himself from all afflictions. The worst problem that people have is all their afflictions, but by practicing the Ten Great Vows, one can be liberated from all afflictions, just as the lordly lion, the king of beasts, subdues all beasts. This person will be worthy of receiving the offerings of all living beings. He will receive the offerings of all living beings.